Good evening, viewers. My name is Shorvel Johnson Cunningham, CEO of Sagicor Bank. Welcome to all of you who are joining us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and to our specially invited guests on Zoom. At Sagicor Bank, we remain committed to being in our clan's corner. With this as our guiding principle, we are this evening hosting our inaugural tax conference focused on understanding tax planning and compliance. This evening, we have a panel that will speak on varying elements related to your taxes, which includes, but is not limited to, topics such as implications of non-compliance on businesses, challenges navigating tax compliance, Sagicor Bank's commitment to SMEs and corporate clients, a general outlook for the Jamaican economy, as well as maximizing your business credit card for tax purposes. The constraints presented by the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in us hosting this event virtually, streaming live from our social media pages where you can view as well as participate in the question and answer segment. Thank you for joining this informative se session. I would like to introduce the moderator for this evening, Dr. Vinette Notis. Thank you, Charvel. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Vinette, and, and as shared by Charvel, I have the honor of leading today's discussion on understanding tax planning and compliance. With us this evening, from left to right, are some well-experienced and knowledgeable panelists. Kevin Chinsu, who is right beside me, Assistant Vice President for Cards and Payments at Sagicor Bank. Then we have Omar Brown. He's Vice President for Treasury at Sagicor Bank. Then we also have Ms. Cardia Cephas. She is a tax education officer at the Tax Administration Department here in Jamaica. Then we have Mr. Michael Willesey, we call him Mike, Vice President for Corporate Banking and SME at Sagicor Bank. Join us, joining us online are as well, Ms. Alison Peart. She is the President of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Jamaica and Ms. Dorrit Lopez, Taxpayer Education Manager of the Tax Administration Department, and Ms. Mary Horton, Corporate Communications Officer, also from Tax Administration. Yes, we are talking about taxes, so we are well fortified with our team members from the Tax Administration Department. We will be taking questions at the end of the panel's presentations. If you have a question for a member, for any one of these panelists, we ask that you put it in the comments using hashtag AskSagicorBank. Remember, have your questions ready. We are here to respond to them. Let's begin with Mike. He's Vice President of Corporate Banking and SME, who will focus on Sagicor Bank's commitment to SMEs and corporate banking clients, as well as sharing resources available to clients at Sagicor Bank's Business Resource Center. Mike is a self-motivated and experienced banker with over 22 years in corporate finance. He has an MBA in banking and finance from the Mona School of Business and is also trained and certified in credit risk management decision support systems, securities trading, and management of commercial bank. There you have it, Mike, with his wealth of knowledge. Over to you, Mike. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, um, particularly entrepreneurs. Uh, welcome to another of Sagicor's virtual conference. And one question that we ask ourselves, or you may be asking, why, again, is Sagicor doing this? When we look at the SME space and recognize the, the, the value that SMEs uh, play in this country, um, I, I looked at a World Bank report recently, and I saw where the World Bank reported that in most emerging countries, 90% of the businesses in that country are made up of SME, 
they also went on to say that 50% of businesses worldwide are made up of SMEs and that 40% um, of the gross domestic product is made up of uh, contribution from SMEs. And with that said, it is quite important that financial institutions and government create what I call or facilitate the growth of small businesses in a country. Now, at Sajikor Bank, we do recognize that funding is important to SME's growth, and we have placed a lot of emphasis on that. And almost every day, we try to innovate and change framework to make it easier for SMEs to access funding. However, going beyond funding, we also recognize that knowledge, knowledge is a capital. Um, not many people recognize as a capital what it is. It's even greater than physical and financial capital. And it's on that belief why we are launching this conference to provide you with what I call valuable information, which you can use in your business. However, while at Satricor, we are not only focusing on funding, we also want to look at how do we equip you to compete and to run what I call sustainable business. And in and last year, even in the raging pandemic, COVID pandemic, uh, the Sagicor team, many of whom are here, including the president of the bank, uh, Shorvel, who, who spoke to you initially, we came up with an idea and said, what is it that small businesses need? So we decided that we want to provide skill training. So what we did, we established the Sagicor Business Center and it is the first of its kind in Jamaica. Never in the history of Jamaica has any financial institution create a partnership with government in order to aid with the growth and the development of small businesses. And when we talk about joining with the government, it's the Jamaica Business Development Corporation. They are experts in training small businesses and we join with them in order to deliver to you or provide you with what I call um, added knowledge. We went further just last month and said, what else can we do for small businesses? And just last month, we launched the manufacturing and agro-processing um, product, uh, where small manufacturers can access up to 50 million Jamaican dollars uh, up to 12 years at as low, rates as low as 6.5%. So, this is the time for manufacturers to tap into needed capital, working capital, and to retool. This is something that is required. Now, when this company was formed uh, in the 1970s, um, the Dr. The Honorable R. Dan Williams, he said he wanted to make a difference, and he wanted to change the lives of Jamaican people. 52 years after, Sagicor Group has held on to that vision. And that is why whatever we do, we try to change the lives of people. We are always in your corner. And we're hoping that this conference this afternoon will provide you with what we consider to be the, the knowledge which you can use in your business as added capital to make changes in your business going forward. So, I do hope that the information that you'll garner from us this afternoon will help you tremendously. So please enjoy the rest of the afternoon and listen carefully because there'll be valuable information being provided to you. Over to you, Dr. Notice. Thanks, Mike, for that wealth of information. You spoke about knowledge capital and you spoke about how much SMEs contribute to the GDP of this country, and that is why we are having this conversation. We would love to give you a prize to our viewers, our SMEs. And so that prize is a brunch for you and your team. Now, all you will have to do is to give your a response in the comments to this question. Are you ready? Listen. When was Sajikor Bank Business Resource Center launched? We will share the answer right after this break. Remember, put your response in the chat.
Lama started in 1981 as a small storefront on Hadley Park Road. It was started by my parents, and we're now at the stage where we produce bulk syrup, bulk wine, coconut water, ready-to-drink wines, and are continually expanding. We are a small to medium-sized business, and we're trying to grow, so it requires a lot of hours on our part. We have been a customer for Sajik Bank for over 10 years, and during that time, they have worked with us in terms of managing our cash flow, providing product offerings that would help support grow the business. Sometimes just a quick phone call to clarify something, have a question answered, or to execute a transaction. It's important um, for us to be paid attention to, and we feel like Sajikor Bank has been amazing in doing this. The most important lesson I've learned as an entrepreneur is that consistency is key, but also taking risks. If you have an idea, set out your plan and execute it and keep going. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. We will provide the response and the winner at the end of the show. So please remember, you can still have an opportunity to put your answer in the chat. We will now invite Omar Brown to share his economic outlook for Jamaica, not just limited to Jamaica, but how it's what is happening around us now, I know we are all glued to our TV watching the Ukraine and the Russia news. And so Omar will give us some context how this will be affecting Jamaica and other in economic indicators for 2022 and beyond. Now, Omar holds a Bachelor of Science in Banking and Finance from the University of the West Indies and is a CFA charter holder. He is an accomplished executive with over 20 years of experience in the financial services sector, with 10 years at the management and executive level. Omar is a director of the Sajikor Select Funds, treasurer for Chain of Hope Jamaica, and is also a member of the CFA Society of Jamaica. Omar? Thank you, Vinette. Um, good afternoon, good evening, viewers. So I was just taking you through a brief, you know, outlook on the economy um, for 2022. And as Vinet had, had stated before, you know, we're going to take it from just looking at what the global issues that we're facing in financial markets right now. This is not exhaustive, but we just want to highlight two that we I think are the most important as it stands right now. So the first would be, you know, Russia's invasion into Ukraine. And we're going to look at the inflation concerns in the U.S. now and the, 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 the possible rate hike that we may see this year. Then we take it and look in the local space and see how that will affect inflation, interest rates, foreign exchange. And then just give a brief outlook at what we see for 2022 and the risks to, to, to that, um, risk to economic growth. Um, so, you know, as we start, we just, we just look and we see that, you know, Ukraine and Russia combined are major players in, the, in world trade. Um, when you look at, you know, food exports, especially when, it, when you look at grains, Ukraine is one of the heavy players um, in relation to that. Um, one of the things that, you know, concerns me and, you know, I think should, should be a concern for the world market is the fact that when you look at wheat and barley, you know, things that are, that are used in baked products, they are the largest, for, for wheat, they are the largest exporter um, in the world. So what that may mean if the conflict continues and, you know, it, it stays for longer than, you know, one would wish it would, we hope it ends um, soon. But, you know, what you would see is, you know, increased prices in baked products, and especially here in Jamaica, we're going into Easter now, and, you know, we're talking about um, Easter bun and all that. You know, you may see increased prices as it relates to that. Um, another thing that, that, concern, that would concern, the, concern us here is corn. As you know, corn is used to feed poultry. And if, you know, corn prices continue to increase, one would expect that you, you could possibly see increases in poultry prices in, in the coming weeks. Um, and as it relates to, um, you know, oil and gas exports, you know, they are a major player there. Um, actually, they are the largest um, exporter for natural gas. That includes LNG and, 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 and LNG as well. And when you look at, um, you know, they're doing for, you know, oil exports, they are the second largest. So it just goes to show that, you know, the longer this, this conflict goes on, then you can, can brace for higher prices at the pumps, which I think will, will, will impact everybody. Um, you know, when you look at what has happened to the prices of those, you know, most of those products um, since the invasion, 
you would have seen the biggest impact would have been on oil prices gone up by 19 percent wheat is up by eight percent so you know in the coming months you know it's going to be it's going to be more expensive to travel to commute back and forth and you know seeing that most persons are coming out of the pandemic now and getting back to work you will see that impacted in your um in, in your <laughs> expenditure on a monthly basis um, in, in terms of the U.S., you know, what we've seen in the U.S., and this was, and, you know, just to show you how world markets, are, um, things are happening fast. A month ago, the main concern everybody was talking about was inflation, um, and in, especially in the U.S., where, you know, it rose by 7.5% year over year in January. That was the f highest, um, you know, inflation rate for over 40 years. Um, what we're seeing also in the U.S. is higher wages. Um, a lot of persons coming out of the pandemic, some persons that didn't come back into work. So what companies have to be doing to incentivize persons to come back out is to raise nominal wage, um, to raise wages. So what we saw actually was that nominal wages were up 4.5%, which is the highest it has increased since 1983, and you know 1.25% above what it was pre-pandemic. Um, but however, when you just to show you, inflation is you know um, rampant in the U.S. now. When you were to compare that uh, inflation adjust that you, you there was, that increase would be actually lower than what it was before the uh, before the pandemic. Um, what we're looking now, what we're looking at now is that when you compare you know, prices, higher prices in the U.S., higher wage market, and, a and the potential impact of the supply chain issue with what is happening in Ukraine, you know, it is almost certain now that we'll have um, the Fed will have you know rate hike this year, and it will be more hawkish than one would have thought at the start of the year. So that is something that will impact us here in Jamaica, because as rates go up in the, in the states. It, prices will go up along with it, and those prices will come back and impact us as we import those goods. So um, Goldman Sachs, one of the largest you know, um, investments, investment houses in the U.S., so we're predicting a 25 basis point increase at each of the next federal open uh, market meetings for the rest of 2022. So one can expect that you know, at least, at, least, at least for Jamaica, once the U.S. start to raise, raise rates, then you would expect that in Jamaica you will see a similar thing happening from the central bank. So, you know, we look back how it will impact us at home now. So initially when, we, when, you know, when the supply chain issues started, um, it was thought that it would be transitory, meaning that it would just be a period of time and then we would get the supply chain issues under, under, under control. So what we have seen is that the prices... Um, the price increases that would have come about because of the supply chain issues have actually been stronger. The past two to our prices have been stronger than, than what was anticipated initially. And you know, you know, what, we're, what, what that means is that if this continues and the higher than expected, expected pass through to our local prices, we will be paying higher prices than, than what we would have expected and it will impact persons' expenditure on a monthly basis. Um, things that you know, we could also look out for that could impact us, as you know, we're in a hurricane zone. And you know, if we have a, 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 of a strong hurricane season this year, then one would expect that prices will increase even further because agricultural um, goods products will be impacted. Um, the BOJ has, has forecasted that you know, for over the next eight to ten months, they're expecting that the inflation range will be between nine to eleven percent. So that will be significant, and as a result of that. And as a result of that, you know, they have, you know, started to raise interest rates locally. So what we would have seen in February was that they would have raised it by another 1.5%, um, pushing that rate up to you now 4% for the policy rate, which would have been the fourth increase over the last, since, since August, since September. Um, it, how that impacts customers now, what you would have noticed is that, you know, companies who borrow, borrowed using variable rate um, terms, would have seen increase in those rates because the weighted average rate would have, um, the, BOJ, the GOJ weighted average treasury bill yield would have gone up significantly since then. Also, persons looking to come to the market now to raise money would be facing higher, higher borrowing costs than they would have six months ago. Um, so far, what we have noticed is that the commercial banks, they haven't passed on most of those um, rate increases to, the, to their retail clients. However, I do expect that over the coming weeks or months that that will change. Um, just to highlight what has happened in the market you know, in, in terms of interest rates, if you were to look at July last year, you know you could have seen the BOJ CD rate hovering around 50 basis points. The last auction that we had here on, on March um, on March 1st, 
that rate was 6.11%. So that you can see where the BOJ's 30-day CD rates went up by 5.5%, which is significant. In terms of foreign exchange, this is something that we all watch on a daily basis. Um, we've seen year, year to date, as at March 1st, we would have seen a 0.33% um, year to date depre um, depreciation. However, when you consider that to last year, last year being, you know, 2021 was still a pandemic year. Last year was 6.11. So that was, you know, where we are now is very good. However, if you can look at what it cost us to be there, um, the BOG had to intervene in the market 10 times, auctioning 330 million just to provide some amount of liquidity into the market. We have started to see some amount of pullback in the market, and um, you know, one would expect that this will continue going to the end of this month because there's usually persons usually convert to pay taxes, and the demand for FX during this time is tend to be lower than usual. Um, what would have caused caused this um, spike in the earlier part of the year? A few things. So, first thing in the in the foreign exchange market, we saw where. The earners, the inflow from earners was not as heavy as it used to be before. Um, also, we saw increase in demand from all sectors. Um, what one would have stuck out more than anyone else, but which would have been the energy sector. They were in the market a little, a little more than everybody else. Um, in terms of the NIR, NIR decreased by half 492 million month over month, but it still still is very healthy at 3.5 billion dollars and. And, and you know represents 48.7 weeks of goods and imports. For the economic outlook now, as you can see in the graph, over the last you know last year we saw the economy rebounding. Uh, the PIOG has said that for the quarter between um, this October and December, you know, the economy grew by six percent. So that that just goes to show that the economic activity continues to improve and growth is coming back into the economy. Um, what we what, what the PIOJ is projecting is that over the over the next you know between 2023 2022 they're expecting the economy to grow between six to nine percent and three to six percent in 2023. What are the risks to that? Um, you know, persistent persistent high inflation leading to interest rates that could lower than lower that could lower expected growth. And also continue delaying the tourist arrivals because, as we know, if the tourism sector doesn't rebound as we'd want, that would affect our um, economic growth. Um, upside potential, uh, reopening activities in entertainment and schools. As you know, more persons going out, you'll get vendors earning, you know, the peanut man earning, earning the jerk chicken man earning. So that is one thing for us to look out, to, um, look out for. Um, so essentially, you know, what we're seeing, uh, just to just sum it up, what we've seen and what we can expect for this year is higher prices, especially in the short term. However, we hope that you know, this conflict in Ukraine can be resolved as soon as possible so that we can get back to normalcy and then avoid higher inflation in the future. Thanks, Omar, for that very comprehensive presentation. Quite useful for us, for your customers, for your own planning and preparation for this year and the years, the next year. Now, we want to say to you that we have a winner for our first giveaway. Congratulations to, it's Trevine Leng. And so we will indicate to you how to get your gift. Thank you for your participation. We are reminding our viewers, please write your pressing questions and comments, and we will take them during our question and answer session. Up next is Ms. Alison Peart, President of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Jamaica, who will speak to us on tax planning and compliance essentials. She has over 29 years of public accounting experience with big four accounting firms in Toronto, New York, and Jamaica. Alison is now the president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Jamaica. She is also the managing director for APIRT Advisory Services Limited. Alison has worked with clients in Jamaica, Canada, Asia, United States, and Europe across a wide range of industries, including retail, distribution, manufacturing, banking, insurance, and hospitality. So Alison comes with a wealth of knowledge and a wide bandwidth. So she will now be talking to us on 
understanding tax planning and compliance. Alison, over to you. Thank you. Boy, when I hear 29 years, let me just declare I started in, in this industry as a child. It was child labor. I'm not as old as, you know, when I hear 29 years. So hello, everybody. It's tax time, but never fear. It is never too late to get yourself in order to ensure you comply. We have TAJ with us, and we're just going to have a discussion about some of the things you need to know to understand with tax planning and compliance. The first thing you need to know is, do you have to file an income tax return? Make sure you understand if you have to. Sometimes people are confused. They think, well, I have a little side business, but I have a PAYE. So why do I need to file? Make sure you understand if you have to file a tax return. There are some mandatory filings. For example, I am a registered um, public accountant. Notice I say that I registered. I have mandatory filing. If I was a registered and practicing lawyer, I have to file even if I'm only earning PAYE. If I'm a doctor, I must file. Also, if I'm PAYE and I earn income outside of that PAYE, there is a filing requirement that I should know about. Make sure you know if you have to file. Ignorance of the law will not get you out of the clutches of the ICAG, oh, sorry, of the TAJ. So make sure you know and know what you're complying with. You also must understand your liability. It's one thing to know that you have to pay tax, but knowing what you have to pay is even more important. So preparing for tax season requires more than just a little planning and, and, and running when tax season occurs. When January comes, you should be ready. But if you're not, never fail. It is still time to get your affairs in order. Make sure that you understand even the basic tax law. Go to the, the TAJ's website. Look around. If you have a professional chartered accountant handling your taxes, make sure you understand what you're being told. Because it also ensures even if a mistake is made, you catch it. I'm not expecting everybody to be, you know, au fait with the tax laws. Some of them are complex. But have a basic understanding of what it is you should be paying. And if you have your returns prepared by somebody, have them explain it to you. Never be confused about the, your taxes because they're yours. For SME owners, the whole process may sound overwhelming and, and really, really, really complex. Don't worry. Taxes can actually help you with your business because the whole process of putting together the information for taxes will actually help you to determine whether or not you're running a successful business or whether you should change things. Make sure, though, that you put aside the money to pay your taxes and that it is part of your planning because borrowing from the TAJ is not a good idea. Their rates are not as good as the bank. So make sure you stay on top of your business expenses throughout the year. If it is that you give your accountant a little shoebox, make sure you have all your expenses and you have all of your receipts. Because the last thing you want is to have had a business expense and forgotten about it and therefore paid more tax. You want to ensure that you're paying your fair share of tax. Not too much, not too little, but the right amount. So you really need to ensure that your accounting records, which is bookkeeping, you don't have to have a degree in accounting to do bookkeeping. If you know it is, it's a simple exercise in terms of tracking your expenses. If you have an accountant, have them show you how to do it. If you have a software program, use it. Don't just buy these things and put them down and wait for the accountant. Ensure that you know what they are. Remember, I said you should understand your liability. In the tax world, we have these things that we say, oh, this is a tax deduction or this is a tax credit. What does that really mean? Remember, a deduction reduces your taxable income. So you have income that you earn. You have expenses that are wholly and exclusively incurred to earn income. That is a deduction. When you hear somebody say there's a tax credit, that actually goes against your taxes. So if you have no tax, so if you're in a loss, you don't get a tax credit. 
So make sure you understand the difference between a tax deduction and a tax credit. So I'll give you some examples of tax credits. Um, last year, during the budget, the minister, sorry, the year before in 2020, when COVID arrived, the minister of finance announced a $375,000 non-refundable income tax credit for MSMEs. Basically, if your annual revenue was $500 million or less, you got a $375,000 tax credit. Non-refundable meaning if you had a loss, you don't get that back. It's only applied against income tax that you owe. It's not carried forward. It is for that year. So make sure you understand that. The employment tax credit. The employment tax credit is a gift that we should make sure all of us use. If you're unregulated, it can significantly lower your tax rate. You can go from 25% down to 17.5%, depending on the size of your payroll. So make sure that you pay your payroll taxes on time. Otherwise, you're giving away the employment tax credit. If you miss the deadline for payment and filing on a monthly basis, you've basically just given away an opportunity to reduce your taxes from 25%. Even if you don't have a massive payroll and you have a payroll of one, that is still something you want to make sure you file and ensure you have access to that employment tax credit. You also get a tax deduction for charitable donations. A lot of times we make donations and we forget to take them as a, as, as a deduction. You are allowed up to 5% of your taxable income. If you make a loss, you don't get a deduction. However, make sure these donations are to registered charities. If they're not registered under the Department of Friendly Societies, you have just given away money that you can't get a deduction for. So if you expect to get a charitable do donation deduction, make sure that whoever you're giving that money to, if they tell you they're a charity, that you have their charitable ID, and you know that they are registered and not just registered in the first year of operation, that they continue to be registered. You can always check this with the Department of Friendly Societies. Another thing, make sure you separate your personal expenses from your business expenses. You are not allowed to take a deduction for your personal expenses. It is for expenses that you earn, that you, sorry, you incur to earn your income, which doesn't mean living expenses. So be very careful on that. Track your expenses. Make sure, for example, that if you use your personal car, it may be the time to apply for an approved motor vehicle allowance. You don't get that allowance tax-free unless it is approved by TAG. So if you have a situation where you have employees that you're giving them allowances and they're not properly tracked, you may, find, you may find yourself in a situation where you're giving them a taxable benefit, meaning you're giving them additional revenue, which if properly reported to TAJ and approved before, you would be able to get that as a tax-free item. So you'd get a deduction as the employer and the employee would receive it tax-free. But again, make sure you do this correctly. Tax season shouldn't just initiate a crunch time of all of us running around and your accountant pulling out your hair. You know, we all suddenly become gray during tax season. It is a time for you to look at your business, determine if you've been accurately doing bookkeeping, look and see, is there something in my business I should change? Having good records is also important if you unexpectedly get hit with an audit. TAJ can appear very quickly. And that's not the time to be telling them, boy, I don't have this receipt. I don't have that receipt. Doing this on a daily basis and approaching your filing of taxes as a strategy of tax compliance on a daily basis will make your life a lot easier. And it will make your business a lot healthier. Because remember, to pay a tax, you must, you must have a profit. So if you're monitoring your business, you will be profitable and you will pay a tax. But again, you're profitable. So don't look at it as a pain of tax, but look at the profit after tax that you're going to get. And use the time that you're spent to put together these records for tax as a way to analyze your business, to look at, are there areas of my business that I'm actually not making money? Am I subsidizing my customers? Am I being efficient? 
tax compliance can help you. So maintaining your finances is a number one priority as a small business owner. Make sure that you understand that because peace of mind is something you want to have. You don't want to have your business and worry about you know, your, your finances when it comes to taxation. You want to be able to focus on what you do best, which is to grow your business. So use the tax season to examine your bottom line, reflect on your short-term goals, reflect on your long-term goals, and the time and energy you spend in the back office tax preparation, use that to determine an overall success for your company. Trust me, if you do that, you'd be amazed. You may even find that maybe this is not the business you should be in. Don't believe that just because you've sunk money into a business, if it is failing, stop, look, listen, and determine what changes you could make and perhaps to change direction. Finally, if you need to use an accountant, my suggestion, use an accountant who is a chartered accountant, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Jamaica. We, if, if you're not a member of the Institute, you can't call yourself chartered accountant. One of the good things about using a chartered accountant is you know that they've had requisite training in accounting because you can't do tax if you don't quite understand the numbers. We can't do them, but you won't do them as well. So if you're going to hire a profession, make sure that they are registered because not all accountants are registered. And if you run into trouble and they're not a registered entity with an organization, it's more difficult to get some redress. So I would like to leave with you one final thought as well, your pension. Just because you're a small business person doesn't mean you shouldn't have a pension plan. It is another way to get an amazing amount of tax deduction and plan for your future. COVID has been with us two years. Who would have thunk it? Two years went like that. We get old very quickly and we're living longer. So if you haven't done one now yet, do it now. Have today be the start of contributing to a pension plan so that you can reduce your tax rate. It's a gift that will keep giving and, and also make sure you have a will. You don't want to saddle your dependents with the drama of dead left that you have not properly planned for. So giving you these tips to understand your tax planning and your compliance, it is not the disaster that most people think. View your tax planning and your tax compliance as an aid and as a tool to make your business grow and be a very productive part of Jamaica because we need our small businesses. Thank you so much. Back over to you, moderator. Thank you so much, Alison, for that very thorough yet succinct presentation. I want you to use emo emojis available to you and just acknowledge, uh, just clap. Thank you so much. You really touched on quite a bit of stuff. And we must add here that at Sagicor, we do offer pension services to our SMEs. So that, I think, is a very profound point in Allowing, this is an amount that can be used for, for reducing your tax obligation. And so we offer that service too in the Sagicore Group. Thank you very much, Alison. Up next, we have, uh, we have Ms. Cardia Cephas. She's a tax education officer of the Tax Administration Department of Jamaica, and she will now continue that conversation that Alison started and speak to us on the implications of non-compliance. Alison touched on how we can be, at US SMEs or customers can be compliant. Ms. Cephas will now talk about the implications for non-compliance. Ms. Cephas is a graduate of the University of the West Indies and holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Spanish, yes, and postgraduate degree in modern language and education. But yes, she's a taxer and, over, and has over 15 years experience. She's a member of the Taxpayer Education Unit for the St. Andrew Revenue Center. And the team's motto is empowerment through education, which is what she will be sharing, educating us, educating you, our customers. Welcome, Cardia, and over to you. Thank you, Vinet, and thanks for having me this afternoon. So I will be sharing some important points with you and We'll be looking at the implications of non-compliance of business. And 
as I know that Alison, she touched on very important points and all our viewers, I really wanted to take note because at the end of my speech or at the end of the presentation here, I should be able to enhance this and to give information. So what I want the viewers to do is to understand the Jamaica tax system. Know your due dates for filing your income tax returns. The implications of late filing and also the implications of non-filing. As all our business, what we implore you to do is to be tax compliant. So tax compliance is the degree to which a taxpayer complies with Jamaica tax laws. So we are talking about filing and paying on time. We are talking about ensure that you have your records in place, ensure you do proper record keeping. This is by law that each business, once you're in operation, you ought to keep proper records up to six years. Our tax system that we operate here, we have a self assessed system here in Jamaica. What it does, it gives Jamaica's greater control and responsibility over their tax affairs, meaning that you are responsible for compiling, filing your tax, filing your returns, and making your payments. So we say pay more, no more than you should, no less than you should. Pay your fair share. Remember, even though you are responsible for filing your income tax returns, you ought to comply with the dates set by the revenue authorities. Now we are in the height of our tax season, where we might have another two weeks leading up to March 15, where all income tax returns are due on or before March 15. When an individual fails to file his or her return, the Commissioner General is empowered to raise estimated assessments. And also, we look at this when we are talking about our GCT returns. We implore you taxpayers, once you are actually in business, you are, you are charging GCT to your customers. You're registered for GCT. You ought, to, you ought to ensure that you file and pay your GCT on time. Remember, GCT now, general consumption tax, this is not your money. And we always say that. This is the government money. You are registered and you are empowered to collect on behalf of our government and pay the same over to us. Our due dates, we look at our income tax returns where we talk about the individual income tax returns. And for persons who are sole proprietors, you may be earning several income, so several sources of income. So I remember, Alison touched on that. If I'm a PAY person, why do I need to file income tax returns? It means that once you're earning multiple sources of income, you ought to file your individual income tax returns. Also, for partnership, partnerships, you're responsible to file your partnership income tax returns by March 15. Your corporate income tax returns. Charities, you ought to file your charities income tax return as well. And for persons under the special economic zone, also you will be, you are required to file your, in the, your income tax return on or before March 15. The GCT, we want to touch on the, the due date for GCT because remember, years ago we had some amendment where the GCT would have been due by the last day of the month. We had to change it to the last working day. So if the GCT was collected and the charge is incurred for January, the due date for that return would have been due on or before February 28th once the last day of the month is a, is a working day. If not, it is going to be the last working day, which we calculated to be the Friday. Once we have it falling on a weekend, then the last working day is going to fall by the Friday. All right, when we talk about failure to comply and what the implications are, we're, looking, we're talking about penalties and interest accruing on the account, demand notice being served by tax administration, assessments being raised on the account, and court action. When we look at 
the late filing of returns. We're talking about penalty and interest accruing. And uh, I remember Alice says the rate is not as cheap as the bank, but our penalties really accrue from $5,000 per month or a part thereof until the return is filed. So we ask you to ensure that you comply with the due dates so you file on or before March 15. The interest rate that we're currently operating at is 16.632% per annum. So even though you may be charged just penalty, the interest will be accrued also on the penalty. So please, this is something that you should bear in mind. This is something that you should have um, to take this of utmost importance. Remember, taxes is very important. It's something that actually goes into everyday's life. I mean, some persons may be saying, okay, taxes, I'm not too interested in paying taxes, but it affects us at the customer level. We are all consumers, so it must affect us. Or the non-submission or filing of returns, what are the implications of those? We're talking about the demand notice being issued, so you will be served for you to actually file and also to make payments once you have outstanding amounts. Assessment being raised, so even for GCT, once you have not filed the GCT and it's past the 30 days, then assessment is raised. The Commissioner General has that right to raise the assessment on persons who have passed over the due date to actually file. So we don't really want assessments to be raised because this is another process that the taxpayer will encounter. Because this is something that you may not be in agreement with us. And this is something that you're going to be actually objecting to. There is a process for objection. And once you object, then tax administration will be able to actually do verification. And our verification process, we know that you don't want the auditors in your pockets or you don't want the auditors at your office. But please remember, we, we always say, just be honest with tax administration Jamaica. So what we're here, we're here to guide you. And as, and as such, you'll be able to file and pay in the comfort of your home. You actually will have peace of mind. Knowledge is power. And we ought to, and the power that we're giving you this afternoon is to ensure that you understand taxes and understand the implications of not doing as well. The court action, and I want to touch on the court action as, a implication, as an implication of non-filing. Because what happens is that you don't file your income tax return. If you are served a summons, you will have to go to the court. This becomes a criminal offense. Not to scare you, but just to educate you on this. So it becomes a criminal offense, and even though you may file the return after you have been served, you are going to be charged in the court of law. So this is something that I want you to understand. So you come on down and file. If at any point you, you, you are saying that, OK, I don't have enough money to pay now, and I don't want to file my tax return, please, just desist. File your income tax return. When there's liability on our system, it takes, a different, it takes a different channel. This is something that you can go to a negotiation with Tax Administration Jamaica. We can always negotiate with you. We can also have settlements. We are here for you. We are here to give you advice. We are here to, to say that this is the right way. This is the way we are asking you to do things. And as we are at this forum, we are asking all entrepreneurs, Visit our website at www.jamaicatax.gov.jm. We have a wealth of information on our system. Make, it, make yourselves available to this information. All right, filing returns. It has been made easy over the years. No income tax returns have been mandated to file online. So you can file online anytime in the comfort of your home, comfort of your office, so you don't have to think about joining the long lines again. Also, our payments are made easy. Whether it is in line or online, you can actually take charge of how you make your payments. Sagicor has launched their credit card as well. 
you can always use your credit card to make your payments. Also, if you have an account with any of our banks, so we have NCB, Sagicor, anyone, if you don't have a credit card or a visa debit to do your online payment, you can also use our direct funds transfer. You can always transfer your money from any bank to Tax Administration Jamaica. You can use our credit card or visa debit for your online. You can use a direct funds transfer. You can use electronic bank payment. That's when you register for online filing, you will have access for your visa, for your visa debits, your credit cards, or your electronic bank payment. What do I mean by electronic bank payment? So once you have a Scotia account, you'll be able to make your payments straight from your Scotia account for your taxes. Also, we have our NCB bill payment. You can add Tax Administration Jamaica on your NCB online platform and make your payment there. So we have quite a lot of information here and we have options for you. We want you to take the options that we're giving you, make it available, make your taxes important. You can also get your assistance by calling our tax helpline, that's 888 Tax Help, or you can visit our website at www.jamaicatax.gov.jm. You can always view us on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash jamaicatax. And even you can tweet us at jamaicatax. And as our motto always say, Tax Administration Jamaica, changing the way we do business. Back over to you, Vinette. Thank you, Cardia, for sharing the insights and the implications for non-compliance. I hope you are taking very good notes. And we just want to remind you that you make your tax payments using your Sagicor Bank credit card or you do your electronic transfer from your Sagicor Bank account only. So we are going to take a break right now. So we are reminding you to put your questions in the chat at hashtag Ask Sajikor. We're launching the Sajikor Bank Manufacturing and Agro-Processing Loan Product. The features of this loan, uh, it's the tenure, 12 years, and uh, we offer up to $50 million at rates as low as 6.5%. Whatever products we're designing should touch the heart and soul of our country, Jamaica. And we believe that at Satikor Bank, we can assist in doing so. As a small, medium-sized manufacturer, it gave us the confidence to realize what were just simply dreams way down the line. We could actually also bring them forward because there was an infrastructure, financing infrastructure to support that. You know, as a government, we are very excited about the dynamic offering and we want to thank Satikor Bank um, for really stepping up to the plate and really putting their confidence in the stakeholders. Welcome back to Sajikor Bank Tax Virtual Conference, where we are breaking it all down for you, what you need to know about tax. Remember to write your questions and comments using hashtag Ask Sajikor, and we will take them during our Q&A segment. We now will turn our attention to Kevin Chinsu, Assistant Vice President, Cards and Payments, Sajikor Bank. Kevin is ready to speak to us about maximizing your Sajikor Bank credit card for business and tax compliance. This is how you will make your payment. In fact, this is really your only channel for making payment. Kevin has over 16 years experience in banking, spanning across investment and payments. He holds an undergraduate with a double major in finance and international business. Kevin also holds a master's degree from the University of the West Indies in management information systems. Kevin. Thanks, Vanette. I appreciate the introduction and um, good evening everyone online. Um, I get the best part of the evening, which is to talk about credit cards and how you can stay in your living room and pay your taxes. So um, I'm gonna start out just by covering what everybody already knows, just a little um, refresher on what credit cards are. 
and then we'll move on to how we can take advantage of your credit card to make your life a lot easier. So adding a Sagicor Bank business credit card to your toolbox is really um, about making your your day-to-day -day business operations more efficient and also maybe even adding a few dollars back to your bottom line at the end of the day. So um, credit cards are an unsecured credit line with the main feature of being issued in a card form. So you can use this card online or at any one of the point of sale machines in the payments network worldwide. Um, credit cards are granted um, based on the user's ability to repay that debt. So there's no security backing that card. Therefore, credit cards are not very ideal for carrying long-term debt. It's really a mechanism of convenience and to get you um, making your payments more efficiently and quickly. Um, a part of leveraging your cards means understanding some of your features. So we're going to go through three of the main features now and then we'll speak a little later on how you're gonna leverage those features. So your interest rate is the rate that you're charged for carrying a balance on your card, all right? Your billing cycle is that period between your last statement and your next statement. And your grace period is a period of time after your statement that you're given to pay your credit card bill without there being an interest charge. So. Billing cycles normally are about 30 days and grace periods are about 25 days. So in all, you have about 55 days of interest-free time before you start to incur those, those charges. So the business environment in Jamaica has changed dramatically in the past few years. COVID-19 has really accelerated the move away from cash and to electronic payments. More businesses, um, are going into that space. We've learned in the past few years in Jamaica that having a presence online can manage the risk of something happening to your brick and mortar, whether people are unable to come or you are unable to open, people can still do business with you online. Um, it's important to know that even before COVID-19, Jamaica was making this move towards electronic payments. Um, and I'm happy to say that the government led, has led this charge Government of Jamaica has moved many of TAJ's services online. So as was mentioned before, you can stay in your living room in the comfort of your home and pay your tax bill or renew your driver's license or any other a number of, um, of um, functions that you would normally have to go into the TAJ for. Um, so we're now living in an environment where not just the users or businesses having the ability to pay, but you actually have um, sellers out there who are more and more willing to accept those online payments for you from you using your card. So how can we leverage your card? As I mentioned before, you have a billing cycle and a grace period. So we're roughly talking about 55 days depending on the calendar. If you time your payables to as close to the beginning of your, your billing cycle as possible, you're gonna take advantage of the majority, if not all, of, that, of that, um, that grace period. So you're talking about 55 days where you don't have to pay, the, pay out cash in order to settle that bill. So that means 55 days more for you to collect your receivables, and also 55 days where maybe even the money is sitting in a bank. Omar mentioned before that in the short term we can look forward to we can look forward to um, interest rates going up slightly. So why wouldn't you want your money, your cash in the bank, earning a few extra dollars of interest before you have to pay that bill? So maximizing that period between your, your statement and the end of the, the um, grace period is very important. Now, the, the, the billing cycle you'll normally find on your, your statement, it will show you when your um, statement is, is generated and it'll show you when the, the payment date. So your grace period ends at the payment date and your billing cycle starts at the date of your, your, um, your statement. Other than the billing cycle and the grace period, you can leverage the rewards on your card. So for example, Sagicor business cards give you points that you can redeem for cash back, you can redeem it for travel, you can redeem it for hotels, 
you can use some of these points to offset some of your business expenses. If you have business travel, leverage your, leverage your rewards on your card. Um, you can also leverage the, the benefits of your card. For example, from time to time, merchants will, will work along with Sagicor to offer discounts. So for example, maybe during the year, you will find that um, one of your regular suppliers will offer a, a discount for using your Sagicor credit card um, at their, at their business. So you want to pay attention to these things. When you leverage those discounts, it's like adding a discount to your overall invoice. Why wouldn't you want to take advantage of that? Also, um, Sagicor Bank itself would give opportunities during the year. So for example, it's tax season now. For, for our Sagicor Bank cardholders, we will um, consider giving a temporary limit increase on a card so that you can cover your tax bill at the TAJ. Also, we would look at those customers who are good paying customers and maybe increase that limit permanently rather than temporary. Um, for those of you out there who don't have a Sagicor business card as yet, you know, right now we have a promotion for business cards where if you sign up now, you get your, an extra 30 days on your first um, credit card cycle. So that's an extra 30 days on top of the 55, plus we're waiving the first year's annual fee. So, um, that's a big benefit to businesses out there, especially SMEs who are watching every single penny. And in these times, as Omar has, has pointed out, um, we, have to, we have to look at our bottom line very carefully and conserve where we can. So that's it for me, Vinette. Over to you. Thank you very much for that, Kevin. Very good information, very good mechanism for paying your taxes. And Sagicor Bank Card is the way to go. For another exciting giveaway, we invite our viewers to just tell us in the comments one feature of the Sagicor Bank credit card. We will take a short break before moving into our exciting question and answer segment, and we'll allow you the time to type your response to that question in the chat. Pay your taxes the flexible way. Use your Sagicor Bank Business Credit Card. Get one month payment holiday and up to 55 days interest free. Don't have a Sagicor Bank Business Credit Card? Apply today and benefit from one year no annual fee. Lama started in 1981 as a small storefront on Hadley Park Road. It was started by my parents and we're now at the stage where we produce bulk syrup, bulk wine, coconut water, ready to drink wines and are continually expanding. We are a small to medium sized business and we're trying to grow so it requires a lot of hours on our part. We have been a customer for Sajikor Bank for over 10 years and during that time they have worked with us in terms of managing our cash flow providing product offerings that would help support grow the business. Sometimes just a quick phone call to clarify something, have a question answered, or to execute a transaction. It's important um, for us to be paid attention to, and we feel like Sagicor Bank has been amazing in doing this. The most important lesson I've learned as an entrepreneur is that consistency is key, but also taking risks. If you have an idea, set out your plan and execute it and keep going. Pay your taxes the flexible way. Use your Sagicor Bank Business Credit Card. Get one month payment holiday and up to 55 days interest free. Don't have a Sagicor Bank Business Credit Card? Apply today and benefit from one year no annual fee. We're launching the Sagicor Bank Manufacturing and Agro-Processing Loan Product. The features of this loan, uh, it's the tenure, 12 years and uh, we offer up to $50 million at rates as low as 6.5%. Whatever products we're designing should touch the heart and soul of our country, Jamaica, and we believe that at Satacore Bank, we can assist in doing so. As a small, medium-sized manufacturer, it gave us the confidence to realize what were just simply dreams way down the line we could actually also bring them forward because there was an infrastructure, financing infrastructure to support that. You know, as a government, we are very excited about the dynamic offering and we want to thank Sagicor Bank uh, for really stepping up to the plate and really putting their confidence in the stakeholders. 
Thank you for staying tuned to the Sajakor Bank Tax Virtual Conference to this very riveting and exciting and informative conversation. Now, we have an answer to the question that was given, and the question was, what's the lowest in previous giveaways? The answer to our previous giveaways includes, and these are some of the answers, and we are going to tell you who the winner is. We are the lowest, we have the lowest interest rate in the market, and 0% interest up to 55 days to repay. Kevin shared on that. So the winner is, and because we have told you the answers, you should know that you are the winner. The winner is someone from Instagram whose handle is Life Necessities by Chrissy. Congratulations. We will make arrangements for you to collect your prize. It is time to answer your questions. And so we know you have been putting your questions in the chat. And so the first question that we have, we will, we will present it to our CEO, Shorvel. What are some of the projects that clients of Sajikor Bank can expect for the remainder of this year? Shorvel? Thanks, Vinit. Um, you know, so we should know that we can't give away all our secrets for what is coming, right? But I'll just pinch you and tell you one of the things that's coming for SMEs. It has, again, to do with agriculture. Um, it's something that we eat a lot of. So in short order, you know, Jamaicans love the fried chicken, right? So we have a poultry loan coming down the pipeline. But the other things, we don't really want to mention all of them here, but for SMEs, we definitely have that coming on stream. And I know Mike will also say that we're having further training in our um, Sajikor Small Business Resource Center. So the expectation is that we'll hear more on those two projects in short order. Thank you, Shorvel, for that. Thank you very much. We want to continue with a question for you. With a lot of business digitizing, will any of Sajikor Bank branches be closed? As it stands now, we will not be closing any more branches for Sajikor Bank. Thank you for that very frank response. Mike, we have a question for you. What are some of the training facilities available to SMEs at the Business Resource Center? And is there a cost to sign up or to, be a, to become a member? All right. So for training, there are various training, um, depending on the skill gaps. So I'm going to be very general. Um, we're looking at understanding um, financial statements, uh, or to what are the processes in opening a, 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 a a business, you know, sometimes there are some uh, difficulties or challenges for no, new persons knowing how to maneuver the process in opening business. We have that. Looking at um, writing a business plan in terms of making your pitch. Um, and I tell you a very exciting one in terms of how far we have gone. Uh, we're looking at one recently where we're going to be working with a, a, a gym to look at lifestyle and health, and how do we mix health with um, finances. So a number of the, the gym clients will be coming in, and there'll be tips on how to, um, how to um, better your life with respect to what you do in terms of exercise. At the same time, we'll be teaching as well some of the investment tips that goes with that type of lifestyle. So what I'm trying to say is that um, we're also looking for, we'll be doing some surveys as with small businesses as to what are the gaps that they have that we can better address some of these needs. Because we don't want to just be doing uh, what I call um, very general trading as well. A number of the trading, we already have the modules for them that is coming through the Jamaica Business Development Corporation. Sajikor also will be putting on some special training because there are some aspects of business that we think the, the general public is not aware of. And we... We want to touch on the issue of um, the issue of intellectual capital and intangibles. How can you use some of those to enhance your business, especially small businesses? We'll look at some of the frameworks that can get to give you what I call competitive advantage. That what I call these are cutting edge training, well researched, and not being employed by a number of businesses right now in Jamaica. So just stick with us. Call the center. Um, you can get us at. Um, 
satricore underscore SME at um, it is the satricore SME underscore SME at um, satricorejamaica.com. You can just contact us there or it's 9602340, which is the, the center. And we will, you can get a business banker to talk to and you'll know exactly what is on the schedule. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for that, Mike. Mm -hmm. Alison, we have a question for you. When do I record the deferred tax, asset, or liability, and what is the impact of deferred tax, asset, or liability on taxable income? You're looking for tax advice, so that's not something we should get into without knowing the exact situation you're in, because you're dealing with IFRS 9, as well as IFRS 12, which covers off deferred taxes. So just so everybody understands, Deferred taxes are not taxes that you pay to the TAJ. What a deferred tax basically is, it's the difference between the taxable amount or the tax provision that is shown on your financial statement and the amount that you pay over in cash for tax. So when you have accounting income, there's a difference between your accounting income your net income, and your statutory income, which is the amount that you pay your taxes on. So as an example, depreciation for tax is different from depreciation for accounting. So those will give differences. So when you're doing a debit and a credit and you're doing a balance sheet, when you're reporting financial statements with one number but paying out a different number, the deferred tax is in essence the difference between what you pay to the TAJ, which is your current tax, and what you are reporting as income in your financial statements. So I'm giving you the basics of it. So different industries have different things that will create um, deferred taxes. So I gave you a basic one, which would be the difference between the tax depreciation, which we call capital allowance, and the depreciation for accounting. Now, deferred tax can get quite complex because you have certain items that, you know, they go on and they may never depreciate or sorry, they may never give, be given a tax deduction. So like things like capital gains, we consider those to be permanent differences because you will be reporting them on your income, but you won't pay tax on them. So when you look at your financial statements and you see a deferred tax, what it is telling you is the income statement has amounts that are different from what your taxable income is. Now, a deferred tax asset usually could mean, for example, you have tax losses to carry forward. So it means in the future, your accounting income that you're reporting will have less taxes. It's not that you have a tax credit. So a deferred tax is not an amount that you're showing up to TAG that it owe you. So I just being honest that I'm trying to keep it basic because depending on your industry, that difference between accounting and TAJ's taxes can trigger a lot of things. So I, I spoke about IFRS 9, which is accounts receivable in terms of what, you know, there are some adjustments for accounting that we show that the TAJ doesn't accept. So that will trigger another deferred tax. So that's why you hear me telling you the sections that you can Google to look them up. But to keep it simple, it, a deferred tax is basically the difference between the taxes shown on the accounting income reported and the taxes, the cash tax that you pay for income tax. Hopefully I haven't confused you. Thank you very much for that, Alison. I, I think the explanation was very clear. And if there are any follow-up questions, we will field them in the chat. Thank you very much. That was very clear and very simple to understand. Omar, you will not be left out. And after that presentation, you know we will have some questions for you. Based on the increased interest rates by Bank of Jamaica by another 1.5%, the fourth upward adjustment since last September, pushing the policy rate to 4%, how should businesses, individuals prepare for 2022 and beyond? This is someone that was listening to your presentation quite keenly. Go ahead, sir. Uh, okay, thanks. Thank you, Vinet. All right, so 
as, as I mentioned in the presentation, inflation is the, is the biggest concern right now on most persons' mind. Um, so what, what that will mean for you know, businesses is that you have to prepare for higher rates um, as a result of that. Um, in terms of you know, just the general populace, um, persons going, going day, day to day, you'd have to start you know, kind of where they say, you know, you know, cut down on some of your expenditure and you know, try to live a little bit more modest than you used to before because you'd be facing higher, higher prices for the regular goods that you'd buy on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, in terms of you know, out out outlook for businesses going forward as it relates to, to borrowing and, um, and to just, you know, looking at, if you, if you were to just look outward and you look what is coming, just prepare for higher, higher, higher interest costs in your businesses and you will probably have some amount of impact in terms of supply chain, in terms of getting goods if you're ordering goods from overseas. There may be a delay in that, so you know, for some persons, they may want to order more than they would use to in, in a, on a regular business. So if you'd order 10 bushels of something, you probably order 15, so to ensure that you just have enough stock that if this continues for a very long time and you can't get any goods, that at least you will have some goods there. I mean, persons would have seen what would have happened in the U.S. in January. There were some supermarkets that you would have gone into, and there were just no goods there for you to buy. So what it will mean is you just have to manage your cash flow a little better than you used to before. And it will take a lot of, you know, it will take a lot of discipline because, as we all know, when, when, when these things happen, there are sometimes, it sometimes goes longer than one would expect. And what would mean that if you're not managing your cash flow properly, you find a situation where you may, you may be in a situation where you, your business is, 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 is coming under pressure because you can't um, operate the business efficiently. So that is what I would say to um, you know, small business um, owners. Thank you, Omar, managing your expenses. Cardio, we have a question for you. We know that you have two team members who are online who will assist you with some of the responses. But this one, someone from Port Antonio is asking, is there a tax education unit officer at the TAJ office in Port Antonio? Um, unfortunately, we don't have a taxpayer education officer seated in the Port Antonio office. But all our officers seated at the Content Spring, we have two of our colleagues who are responsible for that area. So in the event that you need to liaison with these persons, you can always stop by the office and you can make your request. Speak with the taxpayer service manager and then they will route the information to us. Thank you very much. So there is still support for the taxpayer customers and the SBJ customers on that side of the island. For Kevin, we have a question for you. What are the safety measures clients can implement to further secure their credit card purchases? Okay, that's an easy one. Um, first and foremost, I would say to our cardholders, use reputable websites when transacting business online. So if you're doing business online, make sure that the places that you're spending are places that are known and that are, um, generally have a good reputation. Second of all, don't share your card numbers with anybody. So I know some individuals may want to leave their card, you know, in their desk drawer or, you know, their, or something like that. You want to make sure that your card numbers are secure. Um, don't ever send your card numbers or your expiration dates, and especially not the, the security code at the back via email to anyone. Um, in, in the not too distant past, you would, you, know, you would have some businesses saying, oh, could you just give me the card numbers, fax me a sheet with, a, with the card number and the expiration date and the code. That no longer obtains, ladies and gentlemen. Um, most of these businesses need to get themselves in a position where they have online services, where it can be secured in a proper way. Um, so passing your, your card numbers via email or via fax or even over the phone is not a good idea. Um, other than that, I would say I would also add make sure that your cards are all um, chip capable or EMV, EMV secured. That's a little chip that you now find on your card. I'm happy to say that all of Sagicor Bank's cards are chip enabled, so that should no longer be a problem. But overall, keep your card secure, keep your numbers secure. 
Thank you so much, Kevin. Very good information for our customers to be aware of. Mike, we have this final question for you. And Charvel, you can also respond as well. Does having a credit card help or hinder a client's credit history? If yes, how? Having a credit card can help once it is treated um, responsibly because it adds to your credit history in terms of uh, when we are making assessment in terms of our due diligence to grant credit, we look at how you manage your credit card if that is what you have. And if you have been doing it properly, um, it makes you much, much easier to access um, other forms of credit. So I would suggest that you have a credit card because as Kevin has said, it, when you have, it, it gives you the ability to, have, um, to, to incur some sort of um, debt and not paying any excess interest rate on it if you manage it within that cycle of the 55 days. So it's, a good, it, 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 it's good to have, especially for SMEs, um, as a source of payment that you can actually help you in whatever you are doing. Um, there was a question that was asked, um, um, and, and Omar responded to it regarding what businesses can do, and Omar answered it very well with respect to managing your expense. And he spoke also about the issue of um, businesses going out of stock. Um, I know the president don't want me to say a lot before we jump out there, but um, I'm just saying to distributors out there that we're looking at you as well, and we have a solution to help you with your inventory. Um, so you'll hear from us in less than a month because we, we're not leaving you out because you know you're also important to the economy. Thank you, Mike. Madam CEO? You know, I, at this point, all I would have to say to everybody online, if you don't have a Sajikor Bank credit card, you need to call us tonight, tomorrow morning. Just drop it in the chat. Yes, Sasheen, I see you over there. If you don't have it, you need to immediately drop it in the chat so that the team can come over and guide you through the process. Um, you know, we talk about tax season. Credit spoke, um, Kevin spoke about, what, 83 days without paying interest. That's a big deal. That's a real big deal. So I want to encourage all our SMEs to come to the place that has a real big deal and ensure that we're there. We, we can ensure that we'll be there to hold your hand through the process. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This has been another productive, informative discussion as we examine understanding tax planning and the compliance. We thank our panelists, Shorvel Johnson Cunningham, Michael Willesey, Omar Brown, Ms. Alison Peart, Ms. Cardia Sivas, Mrs. Dorette Lopez, Ms. Mary Horton for adding their wealth of knowledge to this conversation. If you did not get to ask your question, we do apologize. However, send us a direct message to one of our representatives who will reach out to you and will surely give you that response. Thank you for joining us again, and thank you also for sharing. Until we meet again, stay safe, and remember to continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. God bless you.